now and then. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Okay, so uh, I'm Christopher Chang. I'm the outreach chair for Boston University's Chinese Students Association. Uh, would you mind giving a brief introduction of yourself? Okay, so thank you for interviewing me. My name is Hei Chris Ham. I'm an associate professor at Boston University School of Social Work. And my research area is Asian American um, women's health and mental health. Awesome. So the main purpose of today's interview is to bring awareness and address the rising anti-Asian sentiment in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just have a few questions for you. Sure. Um, so as you know, there's been a rise of anti-Asian racism running through our country. What are your thoughts on these issues? Uh, okay. First, when that happened, I was like, wow, I have never experienced this kind of surge of anti- Asian discrimination. And personally, I was really scared. I was in fear actually, when actually when it happened, um, the woman was, the woman was attacked with a chemical. Do you remember that? Okay, yeah. when that happened, I was like really in fear. And what we did was that we wanted to investigate a little bit more about how young adults Feel about this, you know, the surge of discrimination issues. So we did the survey, and we surveyed about um, thousand people, and uh, out of that, it was about two hundred forty Asian American young adults actually participated in the survey, and we have found that sixty eight percent of Asian Americans young adults felt that they were the victim of either microaggression. Okay, they or their family members have been the victim of microaggression. And about 15% of them uh, or their family members were the victims of physical or verbal assaults. So when you think about this rate, this is very high rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of course, I'm like outrageous by this and concerned by, by the whole thing. But if you think about this, phenomena, this is nothing new. And, uh, you know, we have to understand this from the historical perspective. Chinese immigration studied Chinese people immigrated to this country about 1850. And from then on, the anti-Asian immigration and anti-Asian discrimination were always persistent, okay? Sometimes it's more and sometimes it's less. And another thing is that, you know, Asian Americans have been persecuted for a long time, okay? They have been, you know, either um, uh, victims of the jokes or slurs because of many reasons. But the, one of the dominant thing is that, you know, there's something about the perpetual foreigners. Asians are being viewed as a foreigners. No matter how long you have lived in America, you are always going to be perceived as a foreigner. The reason why is that there is a white supremacy culture, that white appearance is always going to be, it has been, okay, it has been as a symbol of beauty and as a standard. And obviously, Asians don't look like white, okay? That's why we are always going to be a perpetual foreigners and assume that you are, you are actually coming, came from the um, fresh out of the boat. Okay, that's number one. And number two is that when you look at Asian Americans historically again, um, always, you know, these uh, people, the, the predominant people have noticed or uh, categorized Asians as threats. Okay, dress in two different things. Dress for the economical dress. Okay, because they always feel that, you know, Asians are going to come and get rid of the job opportunities for the rest of the people. Number two is a dress of spreading the viruses, spreading the illnesses. So when you think about those two things, you know, that has been dominant, you know, then what's happening right now and when you think about you know what the Trump said, the China virus, okay, and then the 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 tension and the fight against China 
over the trade, you know, economic stuff, right? These are these are never new. Yeah. Um, why do you think the hate crimes against Asian Americans are not receiving mainstream media coverage? Do you think it's the work mm -hmm. of like the mi model minority myth? Mm -hmm. That's a, okay. I think there are a couple of reasons. Yes, you mentioned the my, mother minority myth. I think that's a really important thing. But when you think about the mother minority, again, that was, you know, uh, developed or created by um, white scholar. Okay, and but what happened was that by putting us as a model minority, it makes us to compete with other minority groups. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also among Asian Americans, we have all different kind of uh, Asians, right? Different mm -hmm. types and different ethnicities. Actually, we are very diverse, and among this diverse group, among the Asians we have huge dif huge variation of social economic status differences you know chinese and indians tend to be upper level but then Hmong, okay and the laotians they tend to be lower okay they are suffering actually they have the, the one of the greatest race of the poverty level in america okay so it not only is not an uh, accurate okay, representation of Asians, but also it divides us. But that mother minority myth is just so pervasive. Okay? So it's eating us up. Oh, the way that how it is eating us up is that it is very convenient that, okay, you know, we have limited resources and when you choose one group as a mother minority, then they are mother minorities. We don't have to take care of them because they themselves take good care of themselves. So, okay, let's take care of them. Okay, let's not think about them. And let's think about the other groups. Let's see how much we can allocate the resources. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. And that has been happening over and over again, years and years. But you know what? We are actually experiencing the consequences of the myth of modern minorities. And what are the consequences? One of the consequences is the mental health problems among young generations like you, you know, particularly among female Asian American women, they have one of the highest depression rates, okay, and one of the highest suicide rates. But we, I can go on, you know, you can ask me more questions and we can talk more about that. So that's probably why we're not receiving a lot of mainstream media coverage, but how do you think we combat the issues uh, of the mass media not covering these crimes? Mm. Okay, so let's think about that. Why, you know, media is not covering these problems. I think there is a, there are two different kinds of reasons, okay? I mean, of course it's more complex, but one, is that Asian American themselves or, or us, you know, we tend not to make a, make the problems a big deal out of it. Okay. So there is a one um, resistance among the Asians that, you know what, it could be complex reasons. This is kind of shaming. Okay. Don't make a big deal out of it. Okay. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. The problems will go away. Okay. Or we suffer alone. This is a problem, so you don't have to make a big deal. So who's going to help us out? Just keep it down, keep it down. So there's a tendency okay, of withdrawing, but not facing the real, real problems. But then the other one is, we talked about the mother minority, you know? Um, you know, they actually, they have these problems, but they are wealthy. They do very well in the society. Okay, and they're, you know, the crime rates are really low. So everybody has a problems. So there's a minimization of any kind of problems that are being experienced by Asians. Hmm. Another issue is this, that we have such a less number of representation, representatives in media or advertisement 
or the TV or you know actors and actress. We don't have a big numbers. Okay. Therefore, if something like this happens, we need to have a, like big networks, right? Those people, those Asian people who are working in those networks or created, you know, if we have a cre created a big networks, they are going to help each other to make a big deal out of this. But we don't have the numbers. Mm. So I think the problem is not just myth. Problems can be, um, you know, multiple reasons. One is Asian American cultural issue. Or the other one is Asian American people, you know, the community issues, right? And it was a really the low number and representation representatives of this Asian people who are working in the industry. I think that could be another reasons. Hmm. Um, so in what ways can us as students at BU help and support this cause? Okay, there are actually many things that we can do. Okay, and these things that I want to talk about I think it's just really critical, but we tend to forget about this. I think I talked about the historical perspective. That's very important for us to know. You know what that means? That means if we collectively don't do anything about it, this is going to happen over and over again. Therefore, you are going to suffer, your children are going to suffer, and this history will repeat. So what do we do? We have to you know, that's why we call it an intervention, right? You need to stop this history or revert the history. We need to make a new history. In order for us to do that, we have to do so many things. Number one is we need to demand. We need to, we cannot be quiet. You know, part of the reason is we cannot just, you know, blame on other people that, that okay, we don't have enough journalists. You know what, nowadays everybody has a YouTube channel. <laughs> Everybody can be an actress and actors, right? So what I did and what our groups did was that we start writing the statements. Mm -hmm. you know? Each individual can write the statement and circulate the statements and repost the statement. Even if it's a, just a short couple of sentences, you know what? When people, more people are doing it and more people are circulating, that is becoming very powerful mechanisms because people have to notice that. I think what people have noticed, people have to realize is that, you know what, enough is enough. We are not going to tolerate that. So that's the number one, we need to demand. And number two is we need to change ourselves. We need to become our, the, the change the agent. Okay, how can we do change the change agent? By taking actions, you know, those actions can be very, very like simple things because we are always on social media anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Do it, talk about it, and then tell them this is not right. Because those people who have been victims of this crime can be your mothers, okay? Or our grandfather, right? Well, my grandfather could be really old, but <laughs> 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 your grandparents, or it could be little children too, or it could be you. We are all being targeted, okay? We are all being impacted by it. But here's the really interesting thing that our research found. It is not only affecting ourselves, meaning that Asians or Asian looking people, it is affecting other ethnic groups as well, other racial groups. We did the interview, right? Um, the online interviews. You have no idea how many non-Asian American young people wrote about how upsetting it was, how angry they were when they observed that other Asian people were experiencing these assaults or jokes, you know? So there are like a lot of good people out there who are furious about, you know, seeing this, seeing this, uh, you know, injustice. So, it is not only Asians who are suffering. We as a whole society, we are all suffering. And we can see that from the way that they are expressing their symptoms of depression, symptoms of PTSD. Asians are not the only one. 
who are going to be the victim here. Hmm. Um, the next question would be, how do you think that the view that my minority group has suffered more than yours has played out on an individual and collective action or inaction during times like these? Can you repeat that, please? Sure. Um, how do you think the view that my minority group has suffered more than yours has mm. played out on an individual and collective action or inaction during times like these? Mm. Yes. So I think that's a very good point because when things like this happen, that you know what, my group suffers more than your group, right? Asians, you know, I understand that a couple of people died, right? You know, some people died, but when you think about my group, they are being killed every week. You know, some group of people can say that. But the beauty is that we need to be in solidarity. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we cannot be divided because we look different. We are all minorities, black people, brown people, Asians, we are all non white. And as long as we are non white, we are minorities. And that means we are vulnerable and there is a racial positionality. Okay. So unless we work together, we cannot get the place that we want, we want to be, which is equality and you know, equality. We need to achieve the equality and racial equity issues. We ne we're never gonna get there. So I think what we need to do is that, you know, I told you about the, my research. My research found that the anti-Asian uh, anti discrimination not only hurts Asians, but it also hurts to other racial groups that sort of research has to be out. And people have to understand that it is not only Asian issues. Of course, Asians are being targeted, but you know what? A lot of Asians also have, have um, are married to you know, other racial groups too. So those are your wife or your husbands or your cousins. That's what we need to understand. A lot of times we forget about that. Those are your best friends and classmates. We are not separated. We are all interconnected. Those are good points. Yeah, for sure. Um, before we end this interview, do you have any final thoughts? The final thoughts is this. We're going to have to also demand that more education on Asian Americans diverse and complicated histories should be educated okay in the school level in the k-12 and even in a college level because the medias or social medias the whatever they are putting out as the asian stuff is so limited okay let's think about that it could be just food right some good foods i mean asian foods are really delicious i mean i love that and you love it too right but when you think about korea north koreans Always, Kim Jong-un, he's the, the symbol of all the Asian Korean guys, right? Mm -hmm. And Chinese is the same thing, always negative, negative, okay, messages. So therefore, the young generation, just like you, people who are very young and have not lived in Asian countries, but then who have born, have been born in the US, they don't want to say, I'm a Chinese American, I'm an Asian American, because they don't, they don't really feel the proud, right? Pride. We need to have an ethnic pride, right? However, if you grow up in Asian countries, you are automatically going to develop this ethnic pride. You know, from the various, various multiple methodologies, through the various methodology. But when you grow up in, in this country, it's very hard to develop that pride, okay? Of course, your parents are trying to do that. Your parents may, you know, take it to the, some schools, right? Language schools. But we are always competing with the sports and music. You know, the language acquisition is very difficult. It's not only about the language acquisition, it's about the cultural pride. Therefore, I think we need to really demand the way that you know, Jewish people, they have acquired having some days as they're celebrating their heritages, 
okay, national holidays, they have that, not national, yeah, it's a holidays, right? Asians, I mean, how many states really celebrate Asian holidays? Yeah. Very few, right? But we deserve that because we need to have those protected time to really observe and to learn about and talk about the pride. So the education is important and we need to demand those kind of rights constantly. And we need to remember that this battle is going to be a long battle, but we are not going to acquire that if we selfishly just think about ourselves and our work and our success. That's how we have been operated, just working as a survivor mode, going into the top universities, getting a top job. No, that's important too. But you know what? A little bit of time and money should be spent for our future generation. And otherwise, we are not going to revert our history.